Hello, fellow fans of Manhua. We are back with a new exciting series called Perfect Secret Love. Sit back and enjoy the video, and please don't forget to subscribe. In the beginning of the story, a young woman wakes up and starts feeling pain in her body. She opens her eyes and sees a young shirtless man standing in front of him in her bedroom. However, the moment it starts to happen, you know what we can expect later on from this. As so, the next day's morning, the girl asks if the boy is trying to escape. In response, he disapproves of such thinking and says no. However, the boy then gets up and wears his shirt, after which he leaves the room. The girl gets up from her bed and starts looking at herself, realizing by saying that she has been reborn. She puts her hand, being surprised to come back to witness the night with Si Ye Han, the man she saw after opening her eyes. However, surprised, yet ungrateful the girl was, to be witnessing the past events after her rebirth rather than actually being dead. She says that because of Si Ye Han, she lost her real lover and her relatives with her dignity, and thus her life became a part. But since she has come back to witness the events again, she wills to never act rashly out of foolishness and let others manipulate her. As she has gotten another chance from God, she can change all of things and start a better life. In the meantime, another girl comes in through the door, calling the girl by her name, which is Wan Wan. She is surprised to see Wan Wan sitting desperately out in a selfless condition and asks from her. The girl's name is Shen Menki, who was Wan Wan's best friend who was supposedly treated very well, but there seems to have been a misconception, so keep watching for the twists. She asks by saying how Mr. Si Yehan has done to the poor Wan Wan, and showing out her friendly covered face, she shares her condolences. But now since Wan Wan has been reincarnated with her past memories along with her, she knows what Menki truly hides. Wan Wan starts thinking about her as the one guiding Wan Wan to dress and look ugly, so Wan Wan can disgust Si Ye Han. However, Wan Wan didn't expect Si Ye Han to take her in. Some people call it as deja vu, but since here the story is a bit different, Wan Wan experiences the same event as happened in her past life when Menki approaches her telling her that she will always help Wan Wan out. Wan Wan then thinks of what she will witness next, as Menki will involve Gu Yueze to aid her. This way, she will make Si Ye Han become more capricious and possessive over her. However, the abilities which Wan Wan currently holds will only lead her to death if she confronts with Si Ye Han, with his family's revenge still on her back, she says, to avoid provoking So Ye Han at any point. Meanwhile, Menki turns over saying that she is going and will come back with a solution for Wan Wan. However, Wan Wan is looking and smirking at Monkey. Wan Wan knows about the true face Menki is hiding from her. She says that Menki is the one instigating her, which puts her in trouble every time, as a blind alley. However, this time, Wan Wan tries to roll the cards herself. Then Wan Wan walks down the stairs and comes out in the garden. This garden, as said by Wan Wan, was designed by Si Ye Han himself, and it almost took five years in its construction after hiring the best constructors from the nation. As of its current status, Wan Wan was not appreciating the work and felt hatred, resulting in Wan Wan destroying it completely. Wan Wan then meets with Gu Yueze. He comes from behind and starts asking Wan Wan about her giving up on Si Ye Han and letting him trample her. At first, what Wan Wan was feeling as a breakdown for her, due to Gu Yueze, who was being loved by Wan Wan in her past life wholeheartedly. But Gu Yueze's response by saying giving up on herself makes Wan Wan to regret herself to be in such a ghastly state for a man who would turn out believing in a one-sided story from someone else. However, Wan Wan feels a chills down her spine, from which she predicts that Si Ye Han can be close to her. Wan Wan sweats but actively responds to Gu Yueze, asking what makes him want to interrogate her this way. Gu says that he knows he is being blamed and that his hands are tied whatsoever. But before he tells about his responsibilities as a cover-up to the conversation, Gu suggests Wan Wan to put everything on him as he will help Wan Wan get out from the royal capital. As I didn't mention what happened in the bedroom, I wouldn't. But Wan Wan here claims that she has lost her virginity, and in her previous life, owing Gu Yueze the chance to change her life was the worst mistake she ever could have made. Wan Wan forgives Gu after hearing that he can't do anything. She says that she was so touched when she learned Gu came all the way over to her place to help her out, but now it's only man's ego that makes her regret her actions. 
Wan Wan was supposedly Gu Yueze's fiance, but now it's different. Not letting Gu Yueze ruin her life, Wan Wan is being insisted over and over to leave with Gu Yueze. In response, she asks to wonder if Gu Yueze will make himself a laughingstock. On the other side, Si Ye Han and his assistant are both looking at Wan Wan with Gu Yueze. The assistant, tensed, looks at Si Ye Han and wonders of the rage Si Ye Han will burst, which will result in all of them suffering from it, due to his girl making him cuckold and meeting with a stranger in the middle of the night. It is said about Si Ye Han that his rage is enough to burn the entire royal capital down. Meanwhile, Gu Yueze raises his hand toward Wan Wan to come with him and leave the royal capital. But Wan Wan confidently steps back and says that she didn't respond in going with Gu Yueze. Gu again convinces, telling Wan Wan that Si Ye Han is the guy who only meant to toy with her, and there is no need to dirty herself in order to take revenge from Gu. Amazingly, Wan Wan first asks what dirty herself is meaning to Gu, and then starts to compliment Si Ye Han as being richer than Gu and more attractive than him as well. Si Ye Han actively hears Wan Wan complimenting him to the other guy, and the same as his assistant, who believes in the strangeness of Wan Wan. Gu puts around Si Ye Han's background by saying that he is so bloodthirsty that he has already taken out so many lives before, and what Wan Wan is thinking of by choosing Sai over Gu. Wan Wan playfully yawns and says that she can become a romantic ghost to wander around, happy for herself that at least she will die under a pretty body like Si Ye Han's. Gu Yueze, kind of being surprised on such a response from Wan Wan, tells her to not come running back to him as he played his part in forming about Si Ye Han, and leaves by saying that he did everything for her. However, as Wan Wan looks at Gu going away from her, she, internally, is happy to play it fairly and opposes her past life. However, Si Ye Han is thinking about Wan Wan who was not loving Gu Yueze from her heart's core, supposedly who was eager to elope with that dude. Wan Wan says that the moment she has brought in has been changed, since what she witnessed in her past life at the exact moment was the worst rage of Si Ye Han ever. She looks through the main door and walks in where Si Ye Han is waiting for her on the sofa. He sees Wan Wan and calls her to himself. Wan Wan approaches Si Ye Han while she is continuously in thought while she is scared. She says that whatever goes on, she needs to overcome her fear from Si Ye Han if she wants to change her fate. Si grabs Wan Wan and pulls her towards himself and put her on his lap. After Si Ye Han gives Wan Wan his love, he goes asleep putting his head on Wan Wan's shoulder. Meanwhile, his assistant arrives, looking at Si Ye Han and calling him out as the ninth master with terrible insomnia. However, he is surprised to see Si Ye Han falling asleep. Wan Wan also concludes the same strangeness when she says that Si's family went through multiple professionals to overcome his insomnia issues. No one could deal with his sleeping issues. Wan Wan then starts screaming as if a butler broke into their house upon seeing the assistant who tries to comfort her. He comes in to check if Si Ye Han is actually sleeping, as he mentions that his boss didn't sleep for three days in a row. This surprises Wan Wan, and wonders if this was because Wan Wan escaped three days earlier and overwhelmed Si Ye Han with his anger. However, suddenly the assistant's phone bell starts ringing by which both of them scream out loud. The assistant, however, takes out his phone while he is being extremely afraid as his boss would wake up, and his disturbance would bring utmost rage to him. Surprisingly, S.I. Yahan actually wakes up, but Wan Wan staying close to him covers his eyes with her hands and puts him back to sleep, leaning him on her shoulder. However, somehow, Wan Wan is seen on her bed in the morning, as it seems the blanket of darkness was unveiled the other day. Wan Wan gets up and wonders when she fell asleep in the night. She rubs her eyes and her fake eyelash is broken off. She thinks of her previous incarnation, that only in order to preserve her virginity for the sake of Gu Yueze. As long as Si Ye Han was home, she didn't even dare to take off her makeup before going to sleep the other day. Then Wan Wan proceeds to the bathroom to take a shower and dismantle her current looks, which basically was an urge to disgust Si Ye Han from her, and basically just to evade from his life. As suggested by Menke, Wan Wan had to put on tattoos, but she managed to get herself temporary tattoos on her. While taking a bath, she says that it's the time where she almost forgot about how she used to be in the past. 
There, the real Wan Wan is revealed while she is taking a bath, and when all of her makeup and stuff is worn off, and looks how beautiful she actually is. Wan Wan then comes out from the bathroom, and while she is combing her hair, she says that she had to cut her hair short in her previous incarnation, but glad to have them long here. Then she goes to the third floor in her cloakroom, where at least dozens of her dresses are hanging. Complimenting Si Ya Hun, who brought her up to the date dresses for her, Wan Wan has never until today has ever touched these dresses. She has come up here to dress herself up. On the other side, Si Ya Han is sitting with his brother who asks from Si Ya Han about his time last night and thinks about Si who might rejuvenate himself by sleeping with Wan Wan. He gets up saying, Si Ya Han as ninth brother, and tells him that his status and physical build can get him any woman by his desire, so why is he choosing and indulging himself with Wan Wan? In the meantime, Wan Wan dressed up is coming downstairs. While Si Ye Han is being told from his brother that he cannot take more of Si Ye Han's life like this with Wan Wan's current physical attributes, they both look up and see Wan Wan approaches them in her new dress. Si's brother is surprised and asks about the girl, whereas Wan Wan comes beside Si Ye Han to sit and eat her breakfast. While Wan Wan sits beside Si Ye Han, she believes Si Ye Han was gazing at her as she senses his stare. However, she notices that Sai is not talking anything about her ghastly look from the past day and tries to avoid thinking about it herself. In response, she believes to remain happy as pretty she is. Si Yehan, however, puts her hair away from face, saying that she almost got her hair in the bowl. Wan Wan blushes and puts her own hand above. Meanwhile, Si's brother tells Si that he has gotten someone who perfectly matches him and then he starts complimenting Wan Wan through her personality and being girly. However, Si's brother also tells Si that he should trample Wan Wan. Upon hearing this, Wan Wan almost breaks out. Then Si's brother asks about that ugly girl Si was with the last night, which disturbs even more to Wan Wan. Si's brother doesn't just stop there. His words truly are full of wisdom as he mentions Ye Wan Wan being fat about two years ago, and by his suspicion, her weight could be around 75 kilograms. A giant fatty rock bangs on Wan Wan as she hears this. Enough is enough! Wan Wan quickly gets up, calling out Sai's brother. Here it's revealed, thank God, his name is Lin Kuei. Anyways, Wan Wan gets up furiously, and firstly she asks about her misconception, concluding Wan Wan's weight to be 75. Lin, however, wonders as the sound looks familiar to him. Upon realizing, he gets to understand and is frightened that she is Wan Wan herself. He gets back and shouts if Wan Wan had plastic surgery. She refuses and says that she has always been the same. But what disturbs her the most is when Lin called her a fatty. Out of her anger, which probably doesn't even resemble the 1% of Si Ye Han, says that she was 70 kilograms only. And while Lin is coming up with 70 up, she is starting to burst out her rage. However, Sai puts his hand on Wan Wan's head and says that she is not fat, this calms Wan Wan a lot that she starts to blush from him. She looks at him and thinks of him being so gentle. Wan Wan then turns her head away from Si Ye Han as she is blushing extremely hard. She says that she is not fat. In response, Si Ye Han comforts her by saying that she was not fat anyway. However, Lin responds in a furious state, asking his brother about his conscience to be clear when he is complimenting Wan Wan. As a reply to this, Si tells Lin about some land in the city who Si Ye Han has given it to Yuanda. This reply makes Lin very anxious, who then starts complaining and reassuring if Si has taken this decision right now or that he was already planning it because Lin was supposedly the demanded person for that specific land. However, Lin concludes Si as an impeccable boss who puts his lovers on top and prioritizes them, putting his friendships aside. When Sai tells him to stop annoying him, Lin felt the burden Wan Wan got when Lin was calling her fatty and stuff. Moreover, they both look over Lin, leaving the room silently, as they are trying to process what they are witnessing. Wan Wan gets back to her seat and says that Lin was quite oblivious to her new look. Si Ye Han says to focus on eating her meal. She sits back and Si Ye Han is giving her meal from his own hand. Wan Wan asks about her looks, which Si tells her that there is not much difference and still she is tasty as before. Kind of a flirtatious tone, she is surprised to hear him say about her taste, wondering when she used to look so appalling. Besides, what perverted taste is he mentioning about? 
She sits there on the table, lowering her face in anger, saying that Sai might be the reason to call it a loss for the effort she toiled her years. Moreover, Wan Wan looks at Si and notices he is smiling. She wonders if this is the effect for his good sleep he managed to get during last night, and actually this is the reason for him being happy this morning. Wan Wan thinks to ask about her schooling by noticing this as an opportunity. Moreover, she realizes of the time in her school and being close with Gu Yueze in her previous incarnation. She was not only giving up on everything for him, but also ruined her studies. But now she has understood that it was wrong, and she should stop giving up everything. So happily, she asks Si Yahan about the college entrance examination. Hesitatingly, she mentions about these exams and conveys that she would want to take this opportunity. Si Yahan changes his mood by asking if she wants to go back to school. Wan Wan. At first, she regrets asking this, and secondly, she knows that Si Yahan can still not take it. Even when Wan Wan apologizes to Si Yahan, he doesn't change the look he is giving to her. Meanwhile, Wan Wan is surprised with this reaction. Anyways, Wan Wan just sits beside him silently, coming up with saying about the difficulty to play up with Si Yehan. However, some worker approaches the door of Sai's house, led by a project manager who has come to ask about the garden's renovation. However, all of them look straight at Wan Wan and become amazingly surprised asking about the person. Wan Wan gets up, asking if she has scared the guests as she has not applied any makeup. Whereas the men become more anxious due to her voice, they were already familiar with her voice. Moreover, Wan Wan tells them about being surprised on looking at her in this condition, as her emo makeup brought a very unique look on their faces. Since Wan Wan compliments herself with emo makeup as stunning, the project manager kind of guilts himself and says that it was more like gasping in stock than stunning. How funny guys you should laugh on this. Anyways, Wan Wan asks if they are not comfortable in Wan Wan's current look. Should she change it to as it was the previous day? on which the manager responds a gentle compliment to her. Wan Wan comes forth and asks if they will be discussing the garden's renovation program soon. She comes close to the manager and asks if she can make some suggestions. As she hopes, she will be living in the house from now on, and wants to suggest some changings according to her own choice. The manager looks towards Si Ye Han, who himself is sitting there as if he has no words to say. However, the manager asks if he should proceed with Missy's suggestions or not. C suggests following his own choice whether he likes it or not. The manager, deep down, crying from his heart, tells of knowing the response. And so he takes out his digital notepad and asks about the suggestions Wan Wan wants to be making in the garden. And so Wan Wan starts talking. The manager asks surprisingly about the flowers when Wan Wan mentions to put sunflowers in the garden as the emo Wan Wan ordered to burn and uproot all the flowers in anger. To explain the reason for putting flowers, Wan Wan says that it will help them fry the sunflower beans in the future. Then she starts making more adjustments to the garden, as the pond which has expensive koi in it should be replaced with grass carp, crucian carp, and shrimps, and growing sweet potatoes on land, and change the roses stand into grass stand instead. And also, cabbage which she suggested in the garden area, which was burnt down. This way, both Si Yahan and the manager, and looking at Wan Wan with a strange look, as they are surprised. The manager shouts cabbage upon hearing Wan Wan's suggestion to grow cabbage in the garden. And on the other hand, Si Yehan puts his cup of tea on the table while he asks, Wan Wan, have I ever starved you? Wan Wan tells him that she didn't worry about money, and even asked the Chi to cook a variety of food every day for her, but quite the reason, Wan Wan thinks that she is depressed and languish for being chained up in her previous incarnation, and slowly she is starting to lose interest in food. But since now she has been given a chance to live her life once more, apart from staying pretty, she must eat good food. And if this doesn't go as planned, it would be such a waste. However, the fun part is when Wan Wan tells about her habit of hoarding food like a hamster as it feels more safe to her. In response, the manager says that it's too naive as he thinks that the woman has turned over a new leaf. However, Si Ye Han, who is actively listening to Wan Wan's suggestions, is surprised to hear her mentioning her future. As Wan Wan was trying to escape a few days earlier, 
how she has turned herself into him. What else could it be? Wan Wan makes the work go by the day. Sooner or later, under Wan Wan's supervision, the project is completed. And as the night comes, Wan Wan comes to see Ye Han's room, wondering about the real problem she is facing. She mentions that school is not the only problem, but the crux is her relationship with Si Yehan and her attitude towards him. In order to have a fundamental change, she suggests having a good talk with Si Yehan. She knocks on the door and Si Yehan opens the door. Wan Wan then asks him if he is free so that can have a little discussion over something important. Si Yehan, without saying anything, turns back and walks in the room, leaving the door open. Wan Wan follows him in, and she says it's her first time entering Si Yehan's room. Inside the room, she sees his personal hypnotist by the name Mo Xuan. Wan Wan comes inside and greets Mo, where her mind races toward the last night where Si Yehan had a perfect sleep after three consecutive sleepless nights. This is because she might be wondering why there is a need to call the hypnotist when Sai might be able to fix the issue with Wan Wan just like the other day. Anyways, Wan Wan approaches Si and asks him to discuss their relationship. Sometime later, they both confront each other while sitting on sofas facing each other. Wan Wan asks about what relationship they hold in between them. In response, Si says that she is mine. This disturbs Wan Wan. She says this method is what she cannot understand at all. Then Wan Wan asks gently about his choice for Wan Wan herself. She says that the personality Si Ye Han holds can attract any type of girl outside, any girl whether they are fancy, fatty, or hardcore girls, that there will be countless girls willing to play up with his interests. But what Wan Wan wants to hear, she says to put aside Si Ye Han's reason for this, as there can be nothing to do. But he asks if there can be a thing where they can change their relationship for the better. Wan Wan says that Si Yahan is only controlling and forcing her to keep going against him. It's because no one can allow anyone's life to be controlled by another person, as it will only force herself to get away from him. Wan Wan keeps on putting more and more to the conversation to somehow make Si Yahan realize. She takes a melon as a reference and says that it can never be sweet by forcing its growth. In response, Si Yehan asks by saying, Who wants a sweet melon? Wan Wan remains silent, wondering what supposedly should be replied to this. She says, looks like you just want me to be your belonging. As for the will of your belonging, it doesn't matter to you at all. However, she receives no response, as usual. So she gets up and comes close to Si Yehan. She asks and convinces Si Yehan if he still doesn't want a sweet melon. However, she puts her hand on Si's shoulders and starts blushing. She then says that she wants to live life like a normal girl who studies and dates. So, Wan Wan says, with your good looks and status, as long as we resume a normal relationship, I will be sure to become a sweet melon for you. Okay, this one is funny, not gonna lie. Wan Wan at this time is so unconsciously facing Si Yehan, she suggests him to taste sweet melons as they are tasty. And by her own choice, she asks if he can give it a try first, otherwise he will make it useless to confirm whether he likes it or not. With an extra adorable look she gives to see Yaham, she asks if she can be granted another chance. Wan Wan promises to work hard in growing herself and be proactive and rooted in her principles. After some time of such convincing debate, Si Yehan finally approves when he says, fine. Wan Wan becomes very excited and asks if she can go back to school and start attending her lessons. Si Yehan, surprisingly, approves this request as well on which Wan Wan hugs him tight, as she is very happy. Before leaving the room, she says that she will go and pack her bag. However, she will come back and look after the garden herself whenever she has time for it. After some time, when Wan Wan is packing her bag in her room, she is thinking of Si Yehan's surprising responses. She thought that he would not allow her to go to school. But what she is more concerned about is to stay in the dorm and leave this cage-like mansion of Si Yehan. She was hoping to do it, and since she succeeded, it's like a dream come true for her. However, she also says that it's her own fault that she never had a proper conversation with Si Yehan in her past life. If only she had tried to change for the better, then she would have ended up differently now. In the meantime, her phone rings. She picks it up, and it's Menki, who is asking about Wan Wan's present condition. She scolds her at first for leaving Gu Yueze alone and refusing to escape with him. Menki says that it took time and effort to persuade. 
Wan Wan replies, excusing that they cannot talk over the phone for now. She says that they can talk about all the things once she they meet in the school in the morning. On the other side, Menki is surprised. She asks how Mr. Si Ye Han didn't pick on her and allowed her to go to school. She says that Si Ye Han saw both Wan Wan and Gu Yueze eloping together with his own eyes, and it is not possible that he just let it off like this. Wan Wan, who is calm in asking about Si Ye Han looking at them together when he wasn't even at home, before Menki puts up the misunderstanding factor of seeing them both together and chasing Wan Wan out in a fury. And in this response, Wan Wan asks if Menki is crystal clear about this. And if she is, how is she knowing all of this by staying at her own place? Menki replies, saying that it was a guess. She thought of Wan Wan and Gu Yueze getting discovered by accident, but quickly ends the call before saying that she will meet Wan Wan in the school the coming morning. Wan Wan puts her phone down, and internally she wonders about the rush Monkey is proceeding in, as the debt in between them will be cleaned slowly. After some time in the night, Si Ye Han is trying to sleep in his room, where his Mr. Professional Hypnotic is using his clock to do his magic. He mentions and whispers to himself that attending Si Ye Han makes him feel guilty, as if he is a fake doctor. Mo Xuan, who is his personal hypnotist, after his continuous two hours of work, comes to conclusion regarding Wan Wan as a reason for Si Ye Han's present unstable condition. But as for this time, where Zhuan's hypnosis fails, he thinks that Wan Wan has already stopped triggering Si Ye Han. What could be the reason now? However, he stands up and asks what major events Si Ye Han has faced throughout his day. But when he asks if there is something with Lady Ye, Si Ye Han quickly opens his eyes out of anger and gets up straight on his bed, whereas Zhuan standing beside him is frightened, saying that Ye Han is very defensive. There is no chance for Ye Han if he doesn't cooperate in return. So Si Ye Han is told by Zhuan that his condition can only be cured whether or not he figures out his mental disorder, which is being caused by the lady. Moreover, on the other day, Wan Wan is getting dressed for her to go to school. She looks at herself in the mirror while thinking of Si Ye Han, who will soon find out if any random guy approaches her in the school. While she is coming down the stairs, her mind races toward her life where she is glad to finally live her life once again. However, for her, it is a must to learn to endure before she gets powerful enough. While Wan Wan walks downstairs, Lin is sitting at the table drinking his tea, and as he notices Wan Wan with her makeup, he spits his tea out from his mouth. Lin puts his hand on his mouth as he is being discussed while saying he will go blind after what he just saw, whereas Wan Wan complains about the arrogance of such a person who gets surprised this way. Wan Wan is surprised when she hears of someone speaking to Lin and saying about such a surprise, for which she is made to wake up five in the morning and come here all the way this early. A girl is sitting beside Lin, who compliments Wan Wan as it is a surprise that Wan Wan has become creative with her look. Lin tells her that Wan Wan has not shown herself with her natural look, saying that Wan Wan without makeup was looking stunning than what she is looking at right now. However, the lady beside Lin says that Wan Wan is stunning with her present looks too, and suggests Lin that he should be moving around with his ninth brother and will surely end up having one for himself as well. Wan Wan asks why Lin is looking at her. She says that for a girl, wearing makeup is a way to show her respect. Lin replies with a very annoying way, saying, Yes, you are respectful indeed. Anyways, as they are arguing about this, Si Ye Han comes downstairs behind Wan Wan. Wan Wan quickly turns and excitedly asks about her looks from Si Ye Han. Wan Wan is wearing an emo type makeup because Si Ye Han likes hardcore makeup, and Wan Wan is trying to follow up with his taste. Si Ye Han comes close to her and only nods his face as a reply. On the other hand, Lin notices them both and asks Si Ye Han about how he is not being irked with Wan Wan's makeup. Sometime later, Wan Wan sits on the table and eats her breakfast. She is feeling so special and surreal to dine with these dazzling heavy weights. She turns to Si Ye Han and thinks of him as the future leader of the Sai family. You know, as for them both, they will surely be sooner father and mother. But as for Lin, he doesn't seem much natural, since he was born in a highly esteemed military family. His grandfather is one of the founding fathers of the nation, by the name General Lin Zhengrong. 
Lin is also said to become a formidable figure in the realm of politics in several years. Beside Lin, the woman, oh, I'm sorry, guys, this is a boy, and his name is Yi Jeji, who is actually an Oscar winner. As such, she is the first celebrity from country Z to get the Oscar award. However, Z keeps looking at Wan Wan on the table, whereas she becomes furious and internally she thinks within her heart about him being a male temptress. She turns her face around, hesitating to be facing Z sitting in front of her and passing flirtatious eye commands. However, she says that she don't want to live anymore, so wonder why she would be needing a signature from someone who is obsessed over her. Z turns to her and compliments her beauty, whereas Wan Wan stands up for herself, regretting and denying with an excuse to take a hold on himself, or else the table will be flipped if this keeps on going. Lin tries to put him aside by asking if he has lost his morality. Z responds by saying that all girls in the world are like flowers, and they deserve to be doted upon and treasured. Lin stands up from the table, whereas Wan Wan looks at Si Yehan beside her. She says if this makes him understand his singleton, where Lin replies being nervous, asking who she is taunting by saying singleton. Wan Wan whispers in Si Yehan's ears, telling him that Lin is the one saying singleton to her, and then asks if this means to curse their relationship or not. Lin is shocked by the crazy play Wan Wan went off with. Anyways, whatever just happened, you should forget it, guys. Wan Wan is ready to go for school already. No matter who else responds but Z, Shur is taking a lot of interest in her. He looks at her very nicely and tells Si Yehan about what he has noticed the change in Wan Wan over the years. Si Yehan puts his cup on the table and says that she has not changed. It's only a new way of her cleverness so that she can avoid Si Yehan. Z tells him about his decisions, even when Si Yehan knows what she is up to, why Si Yehan himself is allowing her to get off with it in the first place. However, it was at this moment that Wan Wan suddenly stopped as if she must have forgotten something. She turns back and quickly runs towards Si Yehan. She grabs Si Yehan on his chair and gives him a goodbye love before she goes to school. This feels like she is not coming back for some time, at least. And then she leaves. When she leaves the house, Si Yehan tells Z that this whatever just happened is his answer for which he cannot resist. On the other side, about some time later, Wan Wan drops outside her school. This is the most elite school of the royal capital for nobility. She is so excited about fulfilling her wish, and especially for her schoolings that she stands in such a position and pops out her excitement saying no one can now stop her in her schoolwork since this is the first after her reincarnation where she is feeling this life. While looking at Wan Wan, a few girls from the back scolds Wan Wan for her looks, as how the elite category of students usually behave like. She walks past a few more colleagues who bump their heads while looking at Wan Wan, where they seem to be recognizing her belonging from Class F. But what can you expect from them, as they seem to be putting disgrace to her life when they say her life is a mess and her looks are horrendous? However, they question Wan Wan's expulsion soon. While Wan Wan is passing by them, they literally don't stop backbiting her. However, Wan Wan proceeds to visit her class. She enters. And at first, there is complete silence where everyone in the class turns to her. But as usual, she receives the same mocking compliments in her class, which is disturbing. Soon, her teacher arrives in the class, who at the very first look complains about her dress. The teacher says that Wan Wan will already be getting expelled, so there is no need to waste time on her. Whereas the seats are arranged in the student's order, in a way that Wan Wan has to sit on the last due to her bad grades. So Wan Wan goes at the end, and so Yahan's nephew, Si Sia, is sleeping on his chair, where Wan Wan sits beside him. As so, Sisia, who is very popular in the school because of his wealthy background and excellency in smoking and fighting stuff. However, his grades are horrendous. He gets up and tries to scram away Wan Wan from sitting beside him. Since Wan Wan's reincarnation has surely brought a very different change to her ethics and nature, she says that before this life she used to be a coward deep down, but whatsoever, now she just makes herself be proud in each moment. She spams her notebook on the table and asks the reason for it. Since she is the exclusive property owner of the seat based on her merit, the whole class notices her reply and starts gossiping over it. Some of them think Wan Wan is only trying to throw it back as a lineup so she could get close to Si Shia. 
However, the teacher furiously responds, making Wan Wan realize that she is about to get expelled from school, and thus it brings no shame to her after all. While the other students laugh at her, saying and mocking her with other different and disturbing comments. The teacher scolds Wan Wan on her dress and complains about her results, which are horrendous. Wan Wan is the weakest link that dragged the entire class down and have no sense of shame, as the teacher says. The teacher, however, seems to be quick with her rage. She quickly announces in front of everyone to Wan Wan to leave the classroom, reasoning that she only talks back to see Shia. So Wan Wan gets up and asks who gave her teacher the actual authority to scram her out of the school. Her teacher's name is Miss Liang. The teacher tells her that the unanimous decision which is made by the school leaders has expelled her. Wan Wan smirks and replies to her teacher by saying that she is being expelled without any wrongdoings done by her side. As a teacher, the only reason why she is at loggerheads with a student like Wan Wan is because she was caught in an affair with a married school leader. However, Wan Wan sits there and asks the teacher about an official letter with the school stamp on it, to prove it. However, her expectation regarding Wan Wan is surely fishy. Miss Liang slams her hand on the table in frustration, asking the dearness of Wan Wan to reply to her with such a tone. But Miss Liang looks at her and says that the expectation can be judged from parents who groom children in their own image. As so, with a try to mentally assault Wan Wan, the teacher mentions Wan Wan's father, who used to do laundry, embezzled funds, and owed loan sharks a ton of money. In regards her brother, who is a gangster and a gambler. On the other hand, Si Xia, sitting beside Wan Wan, is thinking about Wan Wan's confident responses and wonders if he is alive or hallucinating. As this unsightly coward has a spark in her eyes, he says this about Wan Wan. However, Wan Wan thinks about replying to the teacher and comes up with a great one. She says that if parents groom children in their own image, then teachers will groom in their own image as well. And thus, what possible could Miss Liang be the teacher of the worst section out of all the other sections? Miss Liang becomes tensed. She wonders what Wan Wan is into today, as she is being troublesome and wretched. The rest of the class also starts to discuss Wan Wan's behavioral actions regarding her covering her disrespect. A girl who, until today, has listened and heard nothing other than her surroundings scolding her. This damn teacher. Miss Liang, for the last time, mentions that she can and will scram Wan Wan out and it will be seen at the front gate of this school. In response, Wan Wan, as her caliber, will not be helpless against a student like herself. This threat causes the teacher to stand still in her position, paused for a moment to process how Wan Wan has suddenly come up. When nobody believed her if she said something, the person's wife is also a teacher of the school if she were to dig deeper. Liang then puts on the class as their finals are near. She takes her book and continues their lesson, asking from Wan Wan to deal with her after the class. Soon the class starts, and the teacher commands the students to follow up along with her, whereas Wan Wan, who just opened up her book. She thinks of her previous life, where schoolwork meant nothing, and she paid no attention to her studies ever since. But now, if she wants to take back the school's expulsion, her only chance is the upcoming mocking exams. Wan Wan only needs to take a look through the tech book once to understand it, although a week is kind of hasty. Cecia, sitting there and looking at Wan Wan, is surprised to see her putting interest in studies, as for the time being, she always. So Wan Wan then starts flipping pages pretty quickly. Cecia thinks that Wan Wan is putting up a show. Is this the reason? Well, the way she flips the page looks like that. Cecia asks if Wan Wan can be quieter. But Wan Wan replies by saying if he has what he can take, then he should get good enough grades to be able to sit in front, and also that the world is a dog-eat-dog -dog game. And Si Shia has no right to complain by having such low grades for which he is sitting at the back. At first, Si Shia is surprised with Wan Wan, but later on he tries to challenge Wan Wan to put up the grades and to see who will win. Wan Wan comes in her room at night, as her day is spent cleaning and managing her room. While she sits on her bed, she wills to start revising her syllabus for the exam. In the meanwhile, her door is knocked. Menki arrives at the door, asking and sharing her wishes to overcome her obstacles and coming back to the school. Wan Wan is looking very rudely at her and doesn't say anything in response. However, Monkey comes inside the room and strangely, 
Wan Wan suggests her to come back after seven days as she is busy for now. Menki believes his might be due to her quarrel with Gu Yueze. Menki tries to comfort Wan Wan, intentionally she thinks to suit her own favors. But anyways, she tells Wan Wan that Gu Yueze must have misunderstood her relationship with Si Yahan. But let the air be cleared. Everything will be fine. What can you expect from Wan Wan in such a mood then? Well, she simply replies, saying that I don't have much time for Menki's dramatic antics, so she can leave. Menki, putting on a happy smile, says that exams are coming near and she needs to start preparation and leave. Just as I said, you know how Menki is approaching and thinks of her intentions, she is kind of frightened to think of Wan Wan's cold behavior with her. However, Menki notices a past love letter to Gu Yueze has been resting around the table. Menki pulls out her phone and takes a picture. You might be thinking this is for some random thing for her own self. Oh, no, no. When she leaves the hostel, her look gives all the meaning. She sends this to Sai Yehan right away. Menki says that Si Yahan has treated her better every time, and him giving his personal phone number is also a charming chance for her to somehow become the next and coming mistress of the Jin Garden by marrying Si Yahan. Whereas Wan Wan realizes her old love letter is on the table. She picks it up when she mentions this was an older letter she wrote for Gu Yueze and didn't finish it. However, she knows Menki played by her, which resulted in Si Yahan's fury. And as so, Menki must have captured this in the moment too. Meanwhile, back to Si Yahan. Si Yahan sits on his sofa. Beside him, there stands all his home staff, desperate yet angry at the lady. Si Yahan's assistant looks over the side and is extremely frightened over Si Yahan's response. But deep down, he is scolding Wan Wan Sa, a person who never changed. He mentions the habit of Wan Wan, which involves writing love letters to Gu Yueze by casually lying to Si Yahan. Si Yahan commands to bring Wan Wan back, giving them all a last chance. The assistant replies to put his men on work right away. However, Wan Wan is reading the letter right now and is wondering about the consequences she had to bear in her last life. So she wonders, if this letter is incomplete and still not addressed to anyone, why not send it to Si Yahan? She then takes a picture and sends it to Si Yahan just in time. Si Yahan sees his notification on the broken phone on the floor, which he probably threw in rage. Si Yahan's assistant picks up the phone and puts on a strange look on his face. He sees that Wan Wan has sent the love letter to Si Yahan, and how he responds is totally giving the unintentional responses. Si Yahan asks to hand him over his phone, and his assistant turns its screen toward him. Si Yahan is relaxed a bit at first. While he is looking at Wan Wan's chat, she sends him another message asking the reason for his late response. The assistant looks at Si Yehan and calls him, where Si Yehan quickly asks him to be quiet as he is focused on his phone reading the letter. So at this moment, Si Yehan puts his hand on the keyboard and starts typing his reply. While on the other side, Wan Wan is sitting on her bed, thinking about his man's ode to declare his love for such a beautiful lady like her. However, she believes Si Yehan is probably angry with her. And this was the exact time in her past life where Si Yahan's guards came to take Wan Wan from the hostel in the middle of the night, whereas the other students started mocking Wan Wan as the lady trying to run away from these billionaires. And the only reason Wan Wan is kept by these men is because her family couldn't pay the loans. However, Wan Wan is amazed to hear the notification bell of her phone when she sees it's Si Yehan's message to her. She holds the phone and is amazed by it, that Si Yehan is actually being nice to her. To try it out, she manages to send another request to see Yahan by telling him she will be busy with exams in a week and won't be able to talk with him. He replies in her favor, which Wan Wan's face tells all the feelings you want to be judging her with. However, she bumps her head on the table as if in embarrassment that she was the one doing all things wrong in her past life and ended it very badly, when it is so easy to just be nice to see Yahan and show him her love. She gets up, when her mind races toward the idea of knowing about the secret weapon which she can use against the devil. While on the other hand, Si Yehan commands his assistant to call the guards back home. He calls them saying the mission is over and that a storm is averted. However, now it's been a week completely passed, and the day for the exam arrives. Wan Wan is coming to school with utterly disturbed hair, as she didn't get much sleep for the days while she was revising her work. 
And now she says that it's terrible when you can't get enough sleep. So kids, better get to bed on time, right? Wan Wan comes to her seat beside Sishia, who is putting his head down. Wan Wan puts her bag on the table. With a slam, Sishia gets up right away in anger and just about to start scolding Wan Wan. However, he sees her face and compliments seeing a ghost in the broad daylight. But Si Shia changes his thoughts and wants to get good marks so she can be pushed back anyhow. Thus, after a few minutes, the bell rings and the time for the exam starts. However, Si Shia notices her writing on the paper and wonders how she didn't fed up with this, as usually she leaves her paper blank. Obviously, she is scribbling nonsense. She didn't even read the question, as Si Shia looks at her and thinks. The time goes around, and Wan Wan goes on writing her paper. While she sees her mathematics paper, she is horrified by it and compliments such a subject being put to their studies for what reasons. However, she gives up on mathematics. Meanwhile, the bell rings and the time to exit arrives. The two girls sitting in front of Wan Wan turns back and asks Si Shia if he is not much scared of Wan Wan's looks. We'll gladly be able to retrieve his seat back. While the other girl says Wan Wan came last based on her merit, and challenges if they can see her leeching on Si Shia this time. Just as Wan Wan is putting her head on the table, at once, when she has been frustrated with the exams, she hears all kinds of mockery statements for her among the class. When on say, to think too far as this is only a matter of time when she will be expelled, and thus the teacher who failed in disciplining her. The exams will surely show her fate. Some days pass by, and the results are out by the exam board. The teacher, standing in the class, announces of a priority dealing she needs to be dealt with, and it's regarding Wan Wan. Liang says that the school leaders have officially expelled Wan Wan. The whole class starts laughing at her, and some of them also pass glad comments that they won't be needing to see the ghastly looks of each day. The teacher on the other side says that what has gone wrong? Wan Wan wanted to play by the books, and now the game is fair when the official notice is here. However, Wan Wan is told to leave in a second. In response, Wan Wan says that playing by the rules is how things are being dealt with. Then there is also a rule she has read which states, if there is a significant indicator of remorse, the punishment can be lifted and the student given a chance to turn over a new leaf. Which means if she is keeping up with the grades and performs well in her grades, she can be given a chance. However, the teacher looks at her and asks what she will be needing to do even if there are rules. When you look at yourself and see the indicator of remorse as her ghastly looks, she replies, telling and asking Liang if she wants to be doing her job as a teacher of judging books by their covers. However, she suggests looking at her results and then proceeding with it. This way, the entire class starts laughing at her, claiming her to come first from the bottom, or surprising to Wan Wan as being the highest score achiever in the class, such type of compliments are passed on to her. The teacher pretends normally and requests if Wan Wan can quit playing around, and since there is no time to regret as it's already been late. However, Wan Wan has no ounce of shame left in her. As said by the teacher, she is suggested again and again to pack her bag and leave the class. Her excuses will not be examined. The teacher, then somehow, I wonder what you guys will think, but she actually breaks the line when she mentions Wan Wan parents as her estranged parents to come and pick her up when she will call them for. Wan Wan thinks of the time she is reincarnated, and thus her biggest wish has been to visit her parents and especially her brother. But they are also the very people she daren't face after her reincarnation. That is because the time right now has no right or face to meet with them. She embarrassed her parents some time ago, that they are the reason her lover Gu Yueze is not lifting her up because her parents are not wealthy or have a strong background. She mocked them saying that she wants to sever all ties with them only because her fake double-faced lover Gu Yueze is leaving her. However, she left right the moment away. But she didn't notice it at that time, and now is the time she has come to know how selfish and utterly disturbing behavior was for her parents. What did she did just so Gu Yueze could spare her a glance? Well, at least now she does realize her breakdown moment, when she had no idea how her parents kept from her and how much struggles they went through. Anyways, Wan Wan comes back from her thoughts and replies to her dear ma'am by asking one more time as a humble request and a legitimate one to check her exam report and proceed accordingly. 
The teacher becomes furious. She stands still yelling at Wan Wan that if that is what will make Wan Wan suitable and comfortable, then so be it. And digs up the report card to show the class what possible failures Wan Wan is holding. She starts looking at the report card, saying that Wan Wan is not accepting the defeat and making excuses. Liang says that she won't admit defeat until it's staring at her face. She takes out her mathematics report card, as sure it is marked zero. Because Wan Wan gave up at the end seeing mathematics. Liang smirks and announces in the class, showing Wan Wan's result, that this is the result she was adamant on letting everyone to see as the best score in the class. Again, the class, what a bunch of jerks all around. These compliments are worst, but thankfully, Wan Wan is not like that crying baby doll from her past life, and this reincarnation is totally a slap of revenge on each one's face who tried to take her life away from her in return for nothing. However, she manages to give her words, saying that it's only one subject. Mathematics, the others, are still left behind, including literature, English, and the arts. The teacher is advised humbly to see the other comprehensive papers. The teacher continues in looking for the remaining subject papers and comes across literature's paper, where Wan Wan has scored 142 points. Wan Wan stands still, confidently, whereas the class is surprised by her progress. By 150 score from total, no one could ever get 142. The teacher says that even the brightest language student cannot pass over 140 marks. Then Liang sees the rest of the subjects, where Wan Wan has achieved 296 in comprehensive paper, 150 in English. And whatsoever, the tally score makes Wan Wan stand first in the whole class. Wan Wan asks about her class rank, where Liang responds, saying Wan Wan has got some nerves while she is clenching her fist with paper. However, the teacher quickly comes up and yells, how dare Wan Wan cheat in the papers? This was surprising, but Wan Wan remained calm and asks what gives her the impression of Wan Wan being able to cheat. The teacher says if Wan Wan has not cheated, then how come she stands out top in the class with such excellent grades? However, Liang is definitely not being friendly here. As again, the class. Can't these jerks just quiet for a moment? There is seriously a very tense moment going around. Wan Wan is insistent on her cheating, whereas Wan Wan asks if she wants to prove this cheating case, she can provide the evidence in order to prove her guilty. Whereas the teacher came up with saying Wan Wan must have gotten the exam paper leaked before the exam day. However, the teacher advises that Wan Wan's expulsion will no longer suffice, and it's as simple as it is being said. She then takes Wan Wan to the student's discipline office. Wan Wan proceeds to go along with her, whereas Si Sia thinks it will be dealt with, and Wan Wan will get no chance of coming back. A muffled discussion takes place in the class when the teacher takes Wan Wan to the office. Inside the office, the staff and upper heads are talking with the teacher, who tells her that the question might not be as hard as it seems, but such high marks in literature is unreasonable. However, one of them asks Wan Wan that her question to the first question is the same worded as in the model answer. In response, Wan Wan says that she had come across the question before and just simply memorized it. However, the mathematics head comes and asks of such stellar graders for the rest, but why mathematics with a zero? However, Liang interrupts everyone, and in anger and frustration, she asks about the reason why and how a student will memorize such questions who the teacher has not even suggested. In response to Wan Wan, the teacher also mocks her, saying how dishonest Wan Wan is at the moment. The mathematics head concludes if they want to ensure as evidence if Wan Wan is trustworthy or not. And such in order, they will conduct another exam with a spare exam script. However, the total marks are to be included in all the subjects, but Wan Wan refuses to partake in mathematics because it shouldn't be counted as for this evidence test. As the given time is half an hour, she is then put on the seat to start the test. As the time passes by, they all check the answers, and surprisingly, Miss Liang, that she has fulfilled their demand and succeeded. She complains how Wan Wan has gone intelligent overnight from a student who would show no progress after all. Wan Wan says that it's possible she is a genius, or not Miss Liang. However, she comes to the principal and asks for her expulsion notice act, as she has done her part, and now expecting from them to do their part and exclude the notice to let her pursue her schooling. 
When Wan Wan asks for her expulsion notice to be taken back, her principal says that the notice will temporarily be shelved, but still they will be open to observations, and they will see if Wan Wan is determined to change, then they may take the notice back. Wan Wan agrees with this, but in response, she asks about receiving an apology from Miss Liang, where Miss Liang herself is standing behind furiously shocked. The principal asks from Wan Wan that what wonder she can put a teacher in such a difficult position. Wan Wan says that Miss Liang accused her without any evidence, and as such, it was Wan Wan who was put into difficulty. She smirks when her principal tells her that Miss Liang will explain to the class later and clear Wan Wan's name. Wan Wan wonders and whispers about the day she witnessed Miss Liang and Principal, in a room where Miss Liang shouts to Wan Wan that she will apologize. And if there are any issues, Wan Wan is advised to meet with the teacher in private and not waste any time for the rest of the staff. Everyone else are surprised to hear this conversation, whereas Wan Wan is told by her principal that Miss Liang has agreed to apologize to her, but also that Wan Wan will not make any more trouble. Wan Wan agrees and smiles in response. Later in the classroom, Miss Liang is telling her students that Wan Wan proved herself with a re-examiner placement, and thus her results showed her own efforts and passed it all with good grades. In fact, that she has the best score, Miss Liang apologizes to the whole class for her mistake and doubts. Wan Wan says that it's quite all right, and as she hopes, she says that Miss Liang will not judge a book by its cover from now on. This infuriates Miss Liang too, but she controls herself, and thus, the whole class starts chattering and gossip about Wan Wan, that they will need to sit with her in the class and bear her consequences. They laugh and scram Wan Wan. Liang says that new positions are allocated to the students, and thus she recommends and orders the class to arrange their seats according to the grades they have received. Wan Wan goes to pick up her bag beside Si Xia. She says farewell to him playfully, and says that at least he will not have her around. After ten minutes in the class, Wan Wan gets to sit in the front, where everyone looks at her sitting with another student. However, the boy seems guilty. Don't you guys think he seems to be recognizable? Well, it is. Si Sia gets to sit on the front with Wan Wan due to their grades. It seems Si Sia has gotten equal or somewhat equal grades to Wan Wan. Anyways, Wan Wan says and shares her condolences to Si Sia that he has to bear her face for the life ahead and asks what bit of a seat back is this. He shuts her up and wonders about him knowing about the second best score was preferably his. Wan Wan yawns, saying that she needs to recuperate for the efforts she managed to do during exams, and sleeps beside Si Xia on the table. Meanwhile, Miss Liang tells the class about an art talent show which the school has decided to organize, and that their class is to participate in Snow White stage performance. However, Si Xia has been appointed as the prince, but they need a role for Snow White. In such case, several girls have been sabotaging each other like there is no others, only for the leading role to be acquired. To be fair, she asks Cecia to acquire a draw lot, which will be hassle-free, and she says that no one will protest on the result. The whole class's girls start to cheer Cecia, as if they try to tell Cecia that he may name one from them because whoever gets choose must have rescued the galaxy in past life as one of them passes comment along the drawing lot. Cezia puts his hand inside and grabs a name receipt. Ha takes it out and throws it toward the other guy holding the box. He opens the receipt and becomes completely surprised, because the name he reads is of Ye Wan Wan, as by this. Wan Wan is the one appointed to play the role model of Snow White. Again, the whole class. God damn. Someone just sew their mouths. Well, anyways, they start saying that she cannot be the Snow White, and Cecia will never partner her, despite the fact that the whole school will make fun of their class. Meanwhile, Ye Wan Wan is sleeping. And thus, by the noises and gossips in the class, she wakes up asking what has happened. She asks Cecia what he is talking about, whereas Cecia mocks and scolds himself, saying that he will chop his own hand off for what he has done, the same for that Miss Liang, who yells why it is Ye Wan Wan again coming out in a leading role. She wonders that she has already announced that there will be no protest on whose name comes out, and now that she cannot even make a change. She asks from Si Xia about what he thinks to do. He replies, saying that he has picked out her name with his own hand, 
and how can she expect to go back on his word? The other girls become surprised on hearing this from Cixia. One of them asked to take another rounded at Canby, because they don't want to allow Wan Wan perform a leading role. The others are jealous, asking the teacher that Wan Wan cannot be partnering with Cixia. The teacher, however, says that she is not afraid of her causing trouble, but what she fears is that she may not cause trouble. She quites everyone and tells the class that once it is drawn, it cannot be retaken. And now, Cezia has no objections. The female lead is settling to be Wan Wan as Snow White, and that there will be no more arguments on this topic. However, she says to Wan Wan that this show is crucial, and if she messes it up, no one will be able to save her. Wan Wan is surprised and excited that she took a nap and woke up to her becoming a part of the Snow White leading role and became the target of every girl in class. However, Wan Wan then quickly puts his hands on her head and she starts acting strange. Comes out that she is wondering about Si Yehan finding out about Wan Wan acting as another boy's girlfriend, and this way she might be sued. The main thing is, this play of Snow White has a kissing scene in the end. She wonders about herself being pushed into hell after what Si Yehan will do if he finds out about this. She then raises her hand, asking if she can give up on her role. Miss Liang says that she is still under probation, and asks if she have any liberty, whereas someone from Wan Wan back asks how she dare to quit. Wan Wan damns it, whereas in response, Si Xia asks who should be saying that damn word instead. Rather, he is referring to himself. She mentions her boyfriend to Miss Liang, telling her that she has a boyfriend. And for this reason, she is wanting to leave this role as it may bring jealousy and gap between their relationship. Cecia hears this and wonders who her boyfriend is in the first place. And whoever it is, he says that her boyfriend must be blind. Later at night, Wan Wan goes into her room, where she says that she is under probation and is unable to reject on this role. But as she has recently managed to keep Si Yahan down, she needs to prevent Si Yahan from getting enraged out of jealousy. She goes to take a shower, where she tries to think to forcefully substituting Sishia. For that purpose, she thinks of surprising him with a makeover on the next coming day. She sings a song while showering, and when she comes out, her eyes gets open wide when she sees Si Yahan sitting on a chair in front of her. She becomes strangely surprised and runs back to the bathroom right away. She stands still inside and wonders what possible is going wrong. She thinks it's the way she opened the door. So she tries to open the door again and looks from her eye, where she confirms that she is actually witnessing Si Yahan's presence. She comes out and runs toward the main door. While just she tries to open the door, she wonders that she is wrong. Running away is not an option. So instead, she locks the door and goes to sit on Si Yahan's lap. She asks warmly from Si Yahan about him showing up to her room like this in the hostel. Si Yahan says that her wooers, and then asks that they line up all the way to the Milky Way, it comes out that he was trying to line up the lyrics of the song Wan Wan was singing inside the bathroom. Anyway, on this occasion, Wan Wan tells Si Yahan that she has Topper in her class for the first time while Si Yahan is playing with her hair. She says that he is sounding skeptical, as he is thinking it is perfectly normal for a student achieving a position and topping in class. And in contrast to all, she says that the criticisms on the day so Yahan's reaction is different. Or what, I don't know. Wan Wan interrupts and says that she cannot believe the only person having faith in her is Si Yehan. However, Si Yehan then kisses her and passes his comment telling her that she did a good job. Wan Wan then wonders and thinks if this is her reward. She thinks about what she did that made Si Yehan kissed her as her reward. She believes that whatever it is, as long as Si Yehan is contented, and says, Si Yehan as your majesty. Later on, she starts to hesitate, because in her mind, she wonders that she lives in girls' dormitory, and first of all, how Si Yehan got in her room, and second, she wonders what the dorm keeper finds out about Si Yehan's presence in her room. Si Yehan then gets up from the chair and go to Wan Wan's bed and takes off his coat. He says to Wan Wan to set an alarm for two hours later. Wan Wan asks him if he will be sleeping on her bed, he lays on the bed and calls Wan Wan to come close to him. She comes and sits beside him. Si Yahan grabs her and pulls her toward himself, for him to perfectly hug Wan Wan. Wan Wan tells him that her bed is too small and uncomfortable. And if Si Yahan is planning to sleep on her bed, he cannot, 
She suggests going back and be at ease. He shuts her by pressing her on his chest while hugging and complimenting soft and comfortable. Wan Wan wondered if he was referring to her or her bed. The lights are turned off, and after a while Wan Wan asks if he is not trying to go back home, since there is too much noise here and the bed is so small that her legs are not fitting. She asks that without Dr. Mo, he is already unable to sleep, so what he is going to do? See, Yahan is but already fallen asleep. But he opens his eyes and tells Wan Wan to continue talking with him. Wan Wan says and asks if he is making such a demand, and asks if he wants a voiceover to his sleep. She wonders what she should talk about anyway. After a short period, she thinks to start reciting the pie digits for him. She compliments Si Yahan's handsome looks, and in the meantime, someone on her door knocks Wan Wan gets up quickly, as she had almost fallen asleep by herself. She looks over Si Yehan, wondering if he has fallen asleep again. She then thinks about him having difficulty to fall asleep. As even Dr. Mo, currently in his house, will be waiting for him to hypnotize every time he wants to sleep. She tries to wake him up as there is someone on her door, and she doesn't want to reveal him to others. He wakes up, where Wan Wan steps back, mentioning Si Yehan's angry face as if he will destroy the world somehow. So she thinks to make him relax and proceed to give him a kiss. She asks for forgiveness, that she is sorry he is getting troubled by her, and with another kiss, she asks a favor from him. She points to the bathroom and tells Si Yahan that he should go into the bathroom and hide in for a little while, and tells him that she will be over it really fast. Wan Wan then goes to open the door, where her door starts to get knocked continuously. She opens it, and it is Monkey. Wan Wan mentions that she was afraid if it is the dormkeeper calling Wan Wan out anxiously, whereas Menki, on looking at Wan Wan, internally compliments her beauty. She then comes inside and asks why she opened the door this late. Wan Wan tells her that she was sleeping. Menki then says that it is slightly after eight, and why is it that she is falling asleep this early? Where Wan Wan says that it is already so late, and if there is something from Menki, do it quick. Then Menki asks her why she is not wearing any makeup when she came to open the door, as she would be done for it if anyone could see her face like this, since Siyehan's men are all around the dorm, and also she cannot let loose even in school. Wan Wan simply replies, saying that it's not her fault to be pretty, where Menki says that she meant for something else. Calling Si Yahan as a big monster, she says that he got bored over her and how easy Wan Wan left the gin garden. She mentions and tries to divert Wan Wan's mind, saying what if Si Yihan is cooking up a scheme again once notices her pretty face? Wan Wan puts her finger on her lips and makes a thinking pose, saying that Si Yahan could even tolerate her ugly side. Maybe it is his true love after all. But Menki seems very tensed and quickly replies, saying that it is not possible. That big monster, Siyehan, is a merciless killer and that he is a pervert who likes to torture women. Also, she tries mentioning the forgotten past years to be rewinded and think about it. Wan Wan thinks of her past life where Menki tried to get close to Siyehan by herself and pushing away Wan Wan slash after which she took the Shen family enter the upper echelons of the royal capital. But her in this new incarnation cannot allow Menki to be stepping onto her and become Madame C. She says it can only be in her dreams, but not on her watch. Menki says that Wan Wan is still angry over Mr. Gu. She asks about it and says that if she had left with Mr. Gu at that time and explained to him about the merely a force of circumstances, she says maybe the two of them would have gotten together by now. Wan Wan, without confronting a face-to-face -face conversation, says that she knows Monkey cares about her. But in her past life, it was Menki who pushed away Wan Wan and came on top by herself. She did this by suggesting Wan Wan to dress and make up as ugly as possible, by which she will push herself away from Si Yahan, and also by replaying messages between Gu Yuezhe and Wan Wan. After hearing this, Monkey thinks that she has played it very well, and thinks about Wan Wan still being a stupid girl without any doubt. Monkey then holds Wan Wan's hand and says that she is her best friend and to help her means no reason of return. Menki says that she is glad Wan Wan is finally managing to leave Jin Garden, as it is better to look for Gu Yueze now, because if not, how will Wan Wan be chasing him back? Where Wan Wan tells her that who is wanting to chase him back anyways. Menki is now surprised. She mentions Gu Yueze as her fiancé, 
and since her cousin snatched him from her, Wan Wan should go ahead and get him back. Menki puts her hand back while asking if Wan Wan is trying to give it up. And if so, how is she doing this? As this is equal to letting Ye Yi have it her way and go with Gu Yuezhe ahead. Wan Wan says that he is just another guy getting abandoned by her. She then asks the reason to be getting back with him. If Ye Yi thinks that she is the lucky one, why not just let her be like that? Menki is now internally burning. You can see it through her eyes. Why? Well, when she hears from Wan Wan that she has abandoned Gu and thinks about her old where nobody wouldn't dare to say anything bad about Gu Yueze in front of her. Menki says that it's fault of all all that Yi Yi girl. She mentions her father who has snatched away the Ye family, and she took Gu Yueze away from her. Gu cannot do anything it. And what exactly, she asks, why Wan Wan describes Gu like this. Wan Wan says that she just made up her mind out of a sudden. Menki says that Wan Wan cannot act upon her emotions after all. The so many years she has spent with Gu cannot be left away like this. Wan Wan simply proceed to her bed, saying that she is going to bed as she is sleepy. She puts on her blanket and say that they will talk about this next time. However, Monkey turns back, wondering about the past where every advice from her to Wan Wan would be followed heedlessly. But now Wan Wan broke out of her control several times and turning colder and colder. She starts feeling the change in Wan Wan. Wan Wan then runs to get out Si Yehan, who must have overheard the conversation with Monkey. She opens the door and apologized that she didn't know about Monkey coming like this, and instead, it was Dormkeeper. She says that she was scared all of a sudden. Si Yehan leans Wan Wan beside the door while holding her chin and asks her about six hours. Wan Wan asks what he means by six hours. Si Yehan gets close to her and whispers in her ear that he will forgive her if she sleeps with him for six hours. Wan Wan becomes shy and asks what sleeping with her is meaning to him literally. Si Yehan says that it will be fine if she wants more time. Wan Wan hesitatingly smiles and replies that this much is enough. However, they both go to bed where Wan Wan is put in between Si Yehan's arms. She's awake, but Si Yehan seems to be sleeping peacefully. Wan Wan starts to blame, as if this sleeping is enough to give her a headache. She sighs and says that Si Yehan actually set it all up just now so that she would feel sheepish afterward and sleep with him. Wan Wan looks at Si Yehan and wonders if it could be that she is wrong all along. That is absolutely fine with his sleep, and there is nothing about him that seems beyond cure. After some time in the middle of the night, Si Yehan wakes up. He wakes to Wan Wan sleeping under his arm and her hand placed on his chest. He says that it seems like it has gotten more and more difficult to understand Wan Wan from that night onwards. He questions from himself, if all these really are tangible changes, or it really won't disappear like a mirage. Meanwhile, his phone vibrates. He picks it up and reads a new message from Monkey he has just received. Monkey is telling Si Yahan about her visit to Wan Wan and that she is still trying to persuade her for a long time. But according to Monkey, she says that Wan Wan is still angry over Si Yahan, and basically she is trying to manipulate herself over Si Yahan so she could find a better way to play against Wan Wan. However, outside the apartments. Si Yahan's assistant awaits Si Yahan, wondering how it has been six hours and apparently thinking about Si Yahan's intentions. In the meantime, Si Yahan walks outside. He then sits in the car where his assistant wonders about his energized looks. But as so, Si Yahan looks in a bad mood. He looks at Si Yahan from the mirror and wonders about the harmonious situation after the letter incident. He asks if they are keeping Menki or not. He mentions that Menki strategies too much. As it seems, she be stripping discord between Wan Wan and Si Yehan on purpose, and also that she has too much influence over Wan Wan, and that he is worried. Si Yehan asks if he wonders that his relation can be disturbed by any random person this easily. His driver feels guilty and exaggerated, where he refuses that it is not possible. He asks why Si Yehan is saying like this. They have a very stable relation between them. But it's only that Menki is completely out of the equation to Si Yehan. You know, it is the old Wan Wan. But Si Yehan is told that Wan Wan can easily be brainwashed. On the next day, Wan Wan wears a new emo type outfit to the school. She goes to her class wondering about the last night. That when did Si Yehan left secretly? 
Monkey surprisingly comes from the behind and grabs her arm. She says that she was looking all around for Wan Wan, and now that they are together, she asks if they can go to breakfast. Monkey wonders about Wan Wan, that she has taken her words literate when she came to talk with Wan Wan the last night. However, the other students looking at Wan Wan passes ungrateful comments on Wan Wan's looks, that she has gotten a new level of ugliness. While a few girls from the back says to not to underestimate her, since she is very capable, she has gained a highest marks in the class and also now a leading role player in Snow White performance. Menki wonders that Wan Wan suddenly has distanced herself from Gu because of Cixia. Later on, they both sit in the cafe or something like a restaurant, I believe, where Menki asks from Wan Wan about her topping the class for the first time. Wan Wan says that she only took the test casually. But why is Menki asking? Menki asks that Wan Wan hated studying. Why did she suddenly started working this hard? Wan Wan says that she hated it very much indeed, and that she hates everything that comes effortlessly. Menki says that she pushes herself so much to merely to stay in the top ten, but she is surprised how Wan Wan topped the class effortlessly. Then she takes the conversation to Sishia, asking if they both have fallen in love with each other or so. Wan Wan, in a cold manner, responds that she is not interested. Then Wan Wan wonders that she need to attend to the problem with Sishia as soon as possible because Menki will use it again and again in terms of running something against her. Where she got the role of Snow White is bad luck. All of her surroundings are bound to mess it up for her. The bells rings and the classes are appearing to be starting soon. Meanwhile, the maths teacher is walking down the corridor and meets with Wan Wan. He sees her and slightly tries to get back, asking why is she not attending the class. Wan Wan says that she is contemplating her life and asks the teacher to go in the class. However, when he is opening the door, he says that Wan Wan has zero score in mathematic and she should be ashamed of herself. As he walks in, a bucket full of water is empties on him, by splashing water on his head and making him wet all over. While the class's students become anxiously surprised to see the maths teacher coming like this, and are afraid since this teacher is one of those by whom they are frightened. However, he mentions that whoever it is, if that individual doesn't come out, he shall look out and trace him or her by himself. Well, affectionate students stand up by themselves, where the maths teacher orders to come with him to the staff room. The maths teacher is referring to the student causing the watering mess. He is saying that he will fill their lives up with extra homework, where Wan Wan is walking towards her seat. She sits on her chair and says, Why would they take it upon them and provoke teacher Zhao? For your kind information, this name is of the maths teacher. On the other hand, Si Xia stares at Wan Wan and continuously be disgusted with Wan Wan's looks. She then takes out her phone, wondering that she don't even want to bother about him while the teacher is not here. So instead, she sends a message to Si Yehan thinking if Monkey might get ahead of her. She types her message, telling Si Yehan about the cultural gala their school is organizing. And also, that she has been participating in the Snow White show, where her partner, who is playing the role of Prince, is to Shabby. Where, I guess Wan Wan was either typing and reading the message, or either that Cecia was looking at her message, starts to be embarrassed by thinking no one has ever criticized him like Wan Wan is right now. And the ugly girl want to catch his attention. He says that yes, she might have become successful. Yes, Wan Wan looks at him and says that unfortunately he saw the message. Yes. Cecia reads the message. She turns to him and says that there is no need to look down on yourself, saying that he looks all right, but she cannot compare him to her boyfriend. Cecia wonders about his death as if he continues talking with Wan Wan like this. However, on the other side, in the old mansion of C family, Dr. Sun is appointed to do a thorough check of nine. Nine is C. Yehan. So don't get confused, guys. He is nows as the ninth master. See Yehan's mother stand beside him, worried for her son's health. She asks about his present condition. Dr. Mo says that it hasn't changed. See Yehan's sleep schedule has been very different, and he haven't slept for the past three days. She becomes worried that it has again been past three days for his sleep. However, Dr. Mo says that his sleep quality is merely poor, as it has been a week, and as what he thought the limit was looking good yesterday than usual as it is not that awful as he thought it would be.
Dr. So mentions that the insomnia issues of Si Yehan have gotten more grave over the years. And unfortunately, if they cannot find another way, anything bad can happen. Dr. Mo says that it's his mental condition. He can sleep more when he feels happy, but once he gets depressed, he cannot fall asleep for a minute. Si Yahan's mother suggests to find ways to make him happier, as it is not like those who don't know anything about his grandfather's temper. She also says that it has been a long time with Si Yehan, but never saw him smiling for once, whereas Si Yehan looks at something on his phone and smiles genuinely. His mother becomes surprised, saying that it has been very long since she saw him smiling like this. She goes on Si Yehan's back to see what made him smiling, where he tells her that it's his girlfriend's message. His mother asks about his girlfriend very happily. She says that what wonder she sensed the change in her son. And then she asks what kind of girl his girlfriend is. She asks about her age, occupation, her background, and then her name. Dr. Mo pretends very unhappy, wondering if Si Yahan will mention Wan Wan, that retarded lady. And just as he would say anything, Si Yahan says her name. His mother says that it is such a nice name and then says to her silly child that why didn't he tell her before about this? Everyone around him is so rough, and she hopes that there is as a girl to look after him by his side. And she asks to bring Wan Wan home and meet with her. Si Yahan happily replies that he will ask her about this. His mother says to not to mention this as a special meeting. Instead, just say it is a casual meetup. Also, she asks Wan Wan's favorite dish so she can make it for her. Si Yahan says that she can eat everything, and she is not picky. His mother runs quickly to gather the ingredients and make something special for Wan Wan. She calls Shu Yi, and when he arrives, she tells him about his schedule for the day, and asks him how he has been with Si Yehan the whole time, and never knew about his girlfriend. Shu Yi becomes curious, wondering that Si Yehan is dating or something, or what is going on around here, if you want to have more recaps of this one on our channel. Let us know in the comments as your feedback would encourage us to do much more. Please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss more amazing anime recaps like that. Thanks.